probably the one. <laughs> So, you, you know, this is a, what is this, everyone? DNA And which, which, uh, what's the, some characteristic of DNA molecule? It's double Uh-huh. Okay. And it's also... Okay, very good. Uh, it's also DNA Wrong. <laughs> what what what's the helix structure of DNA? Uh, it's what's the structure of uh, DNA helix? Double DNA helix. Right hand helix. Uh, okay, I mean, this is really no brainer if I give this to you. The extra thing, how does the extra thing look like? It really looks like this, actually. Uh, uh, oops, uh, let, me, let me quit this and then restart it again. So the directing is from 5 to 3 here. Yeah. And here is again 5, 3, 5, 3. So that's 5, this is 3. That's the direction. Now let's just do the same thing. All you need to do is find out that 5 carbon, uh, 5, uh, car five carbon sh uh, sugar ring and identify which side is 5, which side is 3. 
then you will know which hand is my Oh, hand. I didn't even see the reset. That'd be the blue one. Right? Uh, okay, let me, let me see where that can uh, uh, put this in a large scale. Yeah. Uh, you can see it on the second one. Uh, so you sit away from the camera. Oh, the blue, the five cards of the top. Oh, that's not what I need. Let's focus on the top one. So. The yellow, that's the three primary right here. Because it doesn't have a touch. Let me see what I can put this in the center of this. Okay, so do we, where, where is the carbon ring? Where do you see a pen, uh, pentagon? Oh, that's Actually, that is, uh, yeah, there's a pentagon here, there's a pentagon here. Mm -hmm. So, this is something, uh, so the red are oxygen atoms, those are uh, the red are oxygen atoms. Uh, so, this yellow line is the backbone <coughs> of uh, the basic ribbon of the DNA. So, that yellow one is the phosphate. That's a phosphate group. Uh, let me see if I turn this, maybe make a mark. So, which end do you think is the three prime? Which end is the five prime here? The five prime is the three. This is the five right here, and then there's the three. Okay, so, so this should be a three end, you would say. Let's see whether that's right. Uh, okay, this this will be say. Uh, let me see. Uh, I can turn on my tweaker here. Uh, so this will be. Uh, let me let's say A is uh, five prime and B is uh, three prime. Uh, how do I turn this on? Turn this on. Uh, so for, for, for this end, A is 5 prime, B is uh, 3 prime, and C, let's see how this game works. <laughs> so come on, it should be more than 2. <laughs> uh, a, uh, this end, this this end I'm pointing is that five prime end or three prime end? That's the three prime. Oh wait, the end is the yellow. Yeah. Is is the same three prime? Okay. Well, well, we don't we, well, we don't have to be very vocal. It's a quick. <laughs> Everybody is entitled for a vote. <laughs> so. Although I guess you can open the floor for debate. Okay, <laughs> but, okay, ten, okay, that's good enough. Let's see. Uh, B. There's a C. What's C, <laughs> uh, what's C mean? <laughs> okay, good. So uh, most of you agree <laughs> it's three prime. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> So actually, uh, yeah, it should be three. Let me, but let me double check. <coughs> so on the on this control panel, those are the actually uh, sequences. The f that, that's from five prime to three prime. So if I if I label this, <coughs> it's uh, red. Do I see? No, I don't see it. So hmm, this is probably the last one. So this is my last one, A strand. Label, label this as the blue, see what a, it is. This one. Yeah, so this is a third prime. In fact, uh, which, uh, let me ask you another question. Uh, so, <coughs> for the second uh, 
so so the basically those are nuclear time, right? So uh, those are nuclear time, first nuclear time, second, and then third. So you, let me hide. Uh, oops, that's not what I mean to do. Let me hide uh, the rest of it so so it become more clear. Let me just uh, put uh, a few. Right. So, so now I have a four nucleotide. One, two, three, four. For the second nucleotide. Uh, we we will have a uh, uh, how many how what what kind of nucleotide will that be? Maybe so it could be the four nucleotide, right? A, T, or C or G. Right. For which one? Which one do you think this one is? So, okay, let me open open this again. See how this one works. Okay. Right. So this nucleotide is this A T C O G. Uh, well. Uh, Go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, oh, this one doesn't show you the, the base uh, structure. Let me see whether there's a base structure. Hmm. You probably have to rely on Google to find the base structure. Okay, so uh, ATCG structure. Okay, so uh, that's a U, but it's basically the oxy, uh, Okay, here it is, here it is right. So, so I ha here you have uh, A T. The question I'm saying is, can it be two? We can guess two of them. No, just one. No, just one. Yeah, it's, it's, the structure is it's there. It can't okay. just be one thing. Okay. So, yeah. So this is ATCG, right? Oops. No, this is the second one. set. It has to be. So this is A. That's mm -hmm. T. This will be C. That will be G. Right. right. So here. Here the structure I can label for you, and here, uh, here is just an actual real structure. You don't, in reality, you won't, no one will label anything for you. Right? <laughs> what? The second one, yeah. I can, I, let me see. I'm going to show both windows so, so you can you can look at the, the textbook version and then the uh, right. So yeah. So now they are all in the same picture now. Could it be A? This one? No. Okay, good. So this one has only one ring. So A has two ring structure. Could it be G? No. no. Okay. So we are basically narrowed it down to either T or C now. Okay, so how many oxygen I have here? Oxygen. 
Right, yeah, there are two oxygen there. There are two oxygen here. There is only one here. So that should be T. Okay. So, uh, let me double check this one. Second one, yeah, it is a T, deoxy, uh, deoxy sign, so that's a T. And just for the fun of it, uh, if you have a look at the, <laughs> which one is this? The third one. Okay, let's open the boat. Uh, see, see, the third one, which, which one do you see? That one, yes. So you, are, you can again use the, I guess, elimination, I mean. That's the actual structure labeled for you, that's G, G. Uh, that's A, so, so you can compare A and G, you will see, well A only have one uh, natural. Natural is, I, th I believe it should be blue, yeah. Natural should be blue. This is something called the CPK uh, coloring method. Uh, Basically, the, in an organic lab, you, you, you should see something like this. So, it basically is this, called the CPK coloring in chemistry. So, white for hydrogen, uh, black for carbon, no. And in our case, the white hydrogen we don't see, so we use white for carbon. Blue for nitrogen, red for oxygen. Uh, yellow should be phosphate. Well, not that wrong, but anyhow. Yellow is sharp, wrong is phosphate. It's not exactly the same, but uh, yeah. so. so this one we see there's one oxygen here, one nitrogen here, uh, one oxygen, one nitrogen. This one, uh, adenine has no oxygen, right? So this should be G. So basically, it, 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 if you then you think about it, uh, if, if you know, see this, you can also find out uh, what its uh, base pairing looks like. A lot of times you say T. Oh, T. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, So I can I can show the uh, so that's that should be the the reverse complement strand now. So so I can actually also find out the hydrogen bond between compute hydrogen bond. Ah, Okay, which base pair are you looking at? Are we looking at? This one. There is a base pair here. This is a base pair. This is actually a nucleotide base pair. Which base pair are we looking at? Yeah, 
guess which way it should be G? G is G is which one? This way is G, that's a C. I'm sorry, how did you mark which one? This is three. So So this is basically how we got the textbook answer. <laughs> Right, how do we know there are three hundred run between C and D? Because in reality, that's what it is. And then we read in a textbook there are three. Yeah. So. Okay, so, so, I mean, if you look at the textbook, that's what often see. But in, and then you look at the actual structure, that's it. Seems to be quite different from <laughs> just putting on the text there. So. Uh, in the past, I, I actually gave an exam like this and asked students to identify this AT pair, it is a CRG. Uh, some students will get it, someone is going to struggle. That's what it actually shows. Now then, there's why it's called a right-hand helix. Right? So this is, why is this a right-hand helix? Can, can someone give me an example of a right-hand helix? Oh no, I was thinking and I was Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you give me an example of right hand hand? That's right, yeah, 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 that's right. This is yeah, the right hand hand. What? Uh huh, yeah, what, what kind of a. Can you give me an example? Uh, it's basically the. The, 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 the thread, how the thread goes. Right, so let's go from the front and you do that. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the thumb is, the, you are moving up this way, and this is the direction the thread goes. So, so the right hand hand is basically, this is going forward, and when you grab that thread, it's going for, your, your thumb is where that thread is moving right. up. And what kind of, a, do you think this should be a right hand or left hand? Oh, the way it turns. This is right yeah. So, most of the most of the things in this world are designed for right-handed people. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. This is right hand. <laughs> so, and all the doors are probably also this way. Yeah. Yeah. So, all the doors. Are, it's it's too bad, but that's what it is. The right hand. <laughs> yes, yeah. Are you right-handed? Uh, I would consider my right hand is my preference hand, yeah, but I should also use my left hand a lot. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, but if I flip the right hand helix, it's still going to be right handed, right? So if I flip this way, if I twist the water away, if I flip this, it doesn't mean if I use left hand, it's going to change. How do, we, how do I switch a right hand helix to a left hand helix? Anyway, I should flip this, it's going to be right hand. Right. But, but I, I, we can change the right hand head to a left hand. How, how do we do that? So, someone say something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, how do we do it? There's a very simple way to do it. Just look at it in a mirror, that's the left hand. <laughs> Your right hand, left hand is a mirror. Right. You just put the right hand, look at it in the mirror, the, the thing in the mirror is the left hand. So <laughs> it's basically, uh, so, so a mirror will change the left hand, right hand. This is called a chirality kind of thing. It's, it's also why so many uh, biological mechanisms are so specific, it's also probably. So you can, if it's right hand, left hand, the end that just won't work on the opposite one. Right, so. uh, because of double helix, it, it, you are also going to see uh, a minor groove or major groove. The major groove are basically a bit, a between them. Uh, uh, I guess just the way it's built, uh, there must be a chemical reason uh, why 
one group has to be large, but I don't remember. <laughs> the, I, yeah, but the if if you have two strands, you you twist them. The two connected one will be more uh, not still better. But you will see uh, always the uh, minor and major group when, when you have a if you put two strings together, put them and then cut the twist, you will see. So there is some rhythm behind. Uh, exactly what's the name? Of that? <laughs> it's just that can't to me now. But. but most of the protein going to bind to the major group. Okay, and some of the basically the fact you need to remember. So, one thousand, uh, a thousand base pair we often call it a one kb. Uh, one million base pair will be a one market base pair. Uh, and how big is E. coli genome? Is about four point five or four point six million base pair. And that is about the. Each base pair is about 0.3 nanometer. Ten base pair is one turn of value. So those are some basic concepts. Uh, I think some. Uh, if I give ever give it, that, I'll probably give you the fact. But there are some things, extra things. Uh, how? What's the average size of bacteria genome? It's usually between 3,000 to 6,000 genes. Uh, e. coli is about uh, 5,000. How many genes in human? You can, you can Google find out. <laughs> uh, that's a uh, multiple choice. <laughs> if you, uh, how many genes in human? I'm going to say 50,000, 20, 30,000, 25,000, 20,000. How many genes in human? Uh, let me see. let me open the open the polling again. See how many genes in our genome? Human gene. Human I see eight response. Let me see. Uh, D majority say D. There is one person slip. Uh, uh, that probably one two person say uh, thirty twenty five. What? We. Oui. You said everybody said D. Uh, half of them. You don't see the polling radar. That's interesting. Uh, how do I show the polling radar? Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I guess one time in a, in a uh, display mode of PowerPoint doesn't show. Sorry. That's uh, to be uh, actually the answer of this is controversial, but most people going to agree this. Uh, I see 19, uh, I think the last time I see people say it's 19,000. Uh, it also depends on how do you count the number of genes. So, uh, has someone found a reference for this? Who has found a reference for how many genes in human genome? What? How many? How many? Uh, I think 
Yeah, I think B is correct. B is both accurate. How many genes are in the East genome? I don't know what. Uh, East? Number of East genes. And check these two. Say, uh, 100,000, 50,000, 5,000, and 500. Of the open of the point. The East one, uh, this this answer should be okay. Uh, I think five response. That's six. Uh, seven. Okay, that's good enough. C. C. That's good. Yeah. Uh, East East is very close to E. coli. Uh, the actual number is probably fifty. 5,500 something, but 5,000 is something. Yeah, it's basically that's, that's the range of these things. Okay, so now, uh, although DNA uh, normally is double helix, uh, sometimes they also form interesting structures. So this is one of them at, at B. This is something we call the stem loop structure. When this happened, why do you think this one happened? Why, if you look at this, this sequence, it actually, uh, this is something we can predict. We, you, we can just look at the sequence and tell whether this sequence can form a, a loop like this or not. There is something very interesting about this sequence. sequence again uh, although it also can be a pairing drug sequence but in this case it's just the uh, self pairing those are just self pairing so essentially no sequence have to uh, have a base pair among themselves so those are base pairs C and G A and T C G A T C G G C T A so instead of uh, forming base pair with the opposite strand, it's actually not forming base pair among itself. So yeah, so that's actually. Uh, but it goes opposite in the loop part, though. Like excellent, a yeah, yeah. So 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 if this is five prime n, so five prime is going this way in this direction, right? On the opposite end, it goes. It's basically. 
it's like it's look like it's forming a helix all by itself. Yeah. So that's a good point. Yeah. So it has to go to the opposite direction. Okay. The helix always form by uh, one five from the three prime, then three five from the three about another. So so this is uh, self pairing the helix structure. And the rest one will be the normal helix. So, and many of the, sometimes the mechanism, like uh, this is DNA, uh, in RNA we can also see this. So when, when, the, when they are special, this will be called secondary structure of DNA or RNA. And very often that becomes a signal for some process, like a termination or a protein to bind or some other process can, can recognize those are the signals. Now many of the something called riboband. So so protein can form enzymes, but ribo RNA can also act as enzymes. Many of the riboband they will have a lot of this uh, stem loop structure among itself to form a, a structure. I go back to the presentation. Let me show many more. Uh, every time I flip between PowerPoint and uh, Clicker, I, I lose some of the feature I want to use. Uh, presentation? Okay, present, present to me. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is actually uh, can be a very interesting uh, question. So, because uh, uh, you think of the DNA, they have a helix, but how how strong will those helix will be is actually determined by the, the hydrogen bond between the uh, two strands. Now, since uh, C and G has three hydrogen bond between them, and A and T have two. That means, uh, okay. If, if I if I write, uh, let me let's just do another exercise. That means the sequence. We can look at the sequence and tell uh, which which uh, DNA is going to have a higher, uh, stronger helix. Which one going to have a weaker helix structure? So let's let's say we have two uh, DNA, uh, DNA helix structure uh, A T T A T C A T C A so five prime three prime five prime three prime so this is going to form a helix so then let's have another uh, helix. Okay, so those are all uh, six nucleotide helixes. Which one do you think will have a stronger uh, GNC? The one with the this most. One, the one on the right. Yeah. So this one we're going to have more hydrogen bond between the two strands. So they are, they, 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 they are Harder more. Harder to break. Yeah. Stronger stuff to each other. So this will be harder to separate. And the way we measure how strong the DNA helix is is that is something we call a melting temperature. This is because we we heat the DNA helix try to separate them. And if we heat the DNA helix, it's going to initially, this is not uh, a being, it's actually mm -hmm. something happen almost like a trigger. This is something of, so if we heat the DNA helix, at this point, the, the absorbance actually is inverse proportional to the, to the how, uh, how many helix are there. If, if DNA stay at the helix, they, they all, Bit like a hug together, like a, a so the absorbance is very small. If if the DNA uh, become the denatured, everything is fluff around, 
and then they will block more light, so the absorbance is uh, high. So, and then, so initially all the helix will be stayed here, but then at one critical temperature, it's almost like almost like the glacier falling. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's it's going on slowly, but at a, somehow at one point everything going to drop. Yes. Oh. Uh, I guess they, they are trying to say uh, because A and T are the weakest portion, the A and T going to uh, be dislodged at first, then you will see a bubble, I guess. Somehow you have to. Uh, I think that's just a, a illustration a purpose. <laughs> uh, Although in reality, maybe they are A and T are single bound at a certain configuration because of the... If you actually look at the end of helix, very often you will see a loose end. In fact, that structure, the structure I just showed you, I didn't show the, the very end. Because the end structure often, because of they have free end, it, it doesn't follow the normal structure very often. So, I, I guess there are some rhythm but part of it is probably just illustration purposes. So, but when it's completely become a single strand, then it has a, of course, then no matter how you heat it, it's still going to be a single strand. So, and what, this is something we call the sigmoidal shape. In fact, you can, uh, you see this kind of curve a lot, but basically if I, if I redraw this plot, using a percentage of the helix, 100% is actually here. 100% here, 0% is there. Right, so, so if I redraw this, uh, if I redraw this figure in a different way, uh, this time I'm not using absorbers, I'm, I'm using, say, Percentage per percentage of helix. If I if I put a y axis into this, the curve should go in the opposite way. It should actually should go like this. If this is 100 percent, initially going to stay at 100 percent, but in the end going to drop to zero percent. But how does the curve in the middle look like? Excellent. Yeah, it should be like this. Right? Basically, but where does it drop? Maybe It's still, yeah, somehow here. So, yeah. So it's going to look like that if I if I redraw the curve like that. So I think one year I looked at some of the MCAT or exam. There is some little similar question like this. I don't have that. That's not Uh, yeah, so basically that's what the, uh, the textbook says. Uh, e. coli genome, uh, uh, and I guess we. Okay. If it's interesting, maybe you should tell us. <laughs> this is, we just pick everybody that's interesting by doing that way. Uh, let me see whether, whether I should stop here or not. Uh, this, this chapter actually is extremely long, so... Uh, let's, let's stop here. So, I have, so we have, uh, I have go over a double helix, base pair, inwardly repeat, melting temperature, E. coli genome. Wow. And all those I haven't talked about. Uh, but I guess I can't stop it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good to have a you, I guess, happy spring break. Uh,
Okay. Like Canada. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, uh, let me see. Do you need me to put an Excel demo? Yes. Do you think we? Okay. Yeah, I can put it. Yep. A, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so I put a YouTube uh, yeah, tutorial yeah. Excel demo how to mm -hmm. do some of party and yes. Yeah. yes. Please. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So, but look. Uh, actually, I, I realized uh, I forgot to mention you. Well, we know the E. coli genome size. We know how many genes in E. coli. Then you, you can actually calculate the average length of gene. And also then from the average length of gene, you can calculate what's the average length of the protein. Uh, I forgot to mention that, but maybe next time. OK, that feels been great. <laughs> You, are. <laughs> you, you, you should talk. Yeah, you should talk to me before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, for those students who want to do a presentation in class, and you should uh, after you, you should talk to me before you do the presentation. Show me the slide. Is this for extra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean, uh, anyone? I guess not anyone because they're twenty. <laughs> but if you want to do it, talk to me, and we we'll pick a topic. Yeah. Okay. If you, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, some of you. Yeah, if you yeah if you need that yeah, so uh, you can just talk to me. Uh, we we won't have a topic. Wait, you, uh, we have a question. Okay. Yes, I think I revised yours already. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. What? I have I have food already. Wait, let me like that where Yeah, yeah, yeah. The recent phase that's when the all the stuff that we have. Yeah, yeah. I have food. Okay. The person who will pull your list is going to be for me. So. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Okay. It has been good because I have been. Yeah. 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 Yeah.